goals, enlightenment and other paths. There are certain paths where this word enlightenment does not exist. The concept of enlightenment does not exist in Christianity, Islam, Sufism, Hinduism and Sikhism. Sufism although talks of two stages in the process of growth, Fana fuel shake and Fana fuel murid. Fana fuel shake the state when drop merges in the ocean or the energy field of the murid or the seeker dissolves into that of shake. Shake bridges his manifest form and unmanifest forms. The other is the state of Fana fuel murid, the state when ocean dissolves into the drop or lends its quality to the drop. In this state, the energy field of the sheikh dissolves into that of murid with these to fulfilled murid lives or subsists by God's will. This state is known as Bakabi Allah. Unlike Christianity or Buddhism or Islam, Hinduism did not develop from the teachings of a single founder or messiah. Moreover, it has diverse traditions owing to its long history and continued development over the course of more than 3000 years. The term Hindu originally referred to those living on the other side of Indus river and by 13th century it simply referred to those living in India. It was only in the 18th century that the term Hindu became specifically related to an Indic religion generally. Hindus adhere to the principle of Vedas, which are a body of Sanskrit text dating as early as 1700 BCE. However, unlike the Christians or Islam, Islamic tradition, which has the Bible and the Quran, Hinduism does not adhere to any single text. The lack of a singular text, among other things, also make Hinduism a difficult religion to define. Hinduism is neither monotheistic nor polytheistic. In Hinduism, emphasis is on universal spirit or Brahman. This allows for the existence of a pantheon of divinities while remaining devoted to particular God. There are many different divinities, but you are free to choose the one over the other. Hinduism can also be described as a religion that appreciates orthopraxis or right praxis. In the study of religion, orthopraxis refer to correct conduct, both ethical and liturgical. Orthopraxis make the use of codified belief in the form of creeds and ritualism more narrowly centered on the strict adherence of adherence to prescribed rites and rituals. So whatever is prescribed, we are about we are to follow those rites and rituals. Orthopraxy, on the other hand, is focused on the issues of families cultural integrity and 
the transmission of tradi traditions from one generation to another, sacrificial offerings, concerns of purity, ethical system, and the enforcement thereof. In Hinduism, orthopraxies and ritualism are often interconnected to one another. Whereas Judaism and Christianity are also considered both religions and orthopraxies as they give adherence to both practice and belief. However, doctrinal views vary widely among Hindus. There is no norm based on orthodoxy or right belief. By contrast, ritualized acts are consistent among differing, different Hindu groups. The word like moksha, also known by other names, are used in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism for vari various forms of emancipation, liberation, nirvana and release. In its study of religious doctrines of salvation, salvation theory occupies a place of a special significance in many religions. In the academic field of religious studies, it is understood by scholars as representing a key theme in a number of different religions and is often studied in a comparative context. This implies comparing various ideas about what salvation is and how it is to be attained. In Hindu tradition, moksha remains the central concept and the utmost aim of human life. The other three aims of dharma, like virtuous, proper moral life, earth, material prosperity, income, security, means of life, and calm, pleasure, sensuality, emotional fulfillment. Together, these four concepts are known as Purusharths or the way of living in Hinduism. In some schools of Indian religions, moksha is considered equivalent to and used interchangeably with the other terms like Kavalya, Mukti, Nirvana, etc. However, terms as Moksha and Nirvana differ and mean different states between various schools of Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. The term Nirvana is more common in Buddhism while Moksha is more prevalent in Hinduism. As a result, the concept of enlightenment does not exist in Hinduism as it exists in Buddhism after the advent of Gautam the Buddha. However, self-knowledge, Brahmalin, absorbed in Brahma, the consciousness, etc., exists enough for now.